Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike O'Malley here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for September 20th, 2022, coming on 12 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about this afternoon, including Hurricane Fiona now setting its sights on Bermuda and Newfoundland and the potential for a hurricane to be forming in the Caribbean over the next several days. So it's going to jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the Chop of Atlantic this afternoon, we notice that things are starting to get interesting out there. First of all, we have Hurricane Fiona continuing to rig portions of the Turks and Caicos Islands right now. This is beginning to pull away, however, and will be turning towards the northeast over the next couple of hours into the, about the next day or two. And then this will be setting its sights on Bermuda as this turns off towards the north and east, and then eventually could turn back north and west towards portions of Atlantic Canada. And then we have Invest Area 98L out here that could go on to become a pretty potent hurricane in the Caribbean. So we look here at Hurricane Fiona this morning. We noticed that again, the storm actually went uh, through an eyewall replacement cycle earlier this morning. And so the initial intensity actually kind of plateaued for a little bit. However, we noticed that the uh, eyewall replacement cycle is basically done and we're starting to get uh, a more consolidated eye structure here. And so what this is going to do is allow for deeper convection to form once again. It's going to allow for the tightening of the wind field and likely additional strengthening. The core here is still uh, off the Turks and Caicos Islands, but still bringing hurricane conditions there. Pretty rough weather from what I've seen this morning. Take a look at the recon plane that's been in there today sampling the storm. We notice that again right now pressures are consistent around uh, 962 to 963 millibars. So not really anything spectacular at this particular point. Uh, but we notice that this is definitely a solid Category 3 hurricane right now. It's kind of the borderline, but still uh, several SFMR non-suspect winds here of 100 knots and flight level winds also of 100 knots, about 100 to 105 knots. So this easily suggests that we are well within the Category 3 range here. And if you look here at the drop zones located in the northeast eye wall, now one of the things to note about drop zones is that all of the wind measurements here are instantaneous winds. These are not winds that are the one minute average or whatever the hurricane center uses. I believe it's a one minute average um, of the wind. So this is instantaneous wind. Uh, however, we do notice that again, especially up here in the uh, upper part of the atmosphere, the winds are a little bit stronger. Uh, we're seeing about 115 to 120 knots in most cases. And this actually suggests that again, if some of this uh, deeper convection can develop, help to pull down and mix down the stronger winds. We could be talking about a formidable Cat 3, Cat 4 hurricane uh, sometime later today or tomorrow. Now the official forecast track here, again, this is a Category 3 and intensifying. This will likely become a Category 4 hurricane with sustained winds near 140 miles per hour sometime uh, by Thursday morning before beginning to weaken. Now, here's the island of Bermuda right here. And again, the storm is expected to pass very near to the island of Bermuda. I mean, we could be talking about uh, significant impacts to the island here, maybe only about a 30 or 40 mile spread uh, in the track. And then this continues up into Atlantic Canada as a hurricane still. Now, if we look at the H4 forecast and exactly how strong this system could get, this is the 0Z run valve for 2 p.m. this afternoon. We notice again the storm is beginning to intensify on this H wharf run, and that's not uh, that's not really 100% out of the question that that could still happen before two o'clock this afternoon. Uh, but we notice that the storm rapidly deepens; it gets pressures down to about 932 millibars. Uh, that's pretty close, actually, to you know high end Cat four, low end Cat five intensity here. We notice though, one of the things that's still hindering the storm a little bit though, we've got this trough over Florida and that's creating a little bit of southwesterly vertical shear over top of the system and has been for the last couple of days. And so this really isn't going to change much as it uh, moves past Bermuda here, uh, but this is unlikely to limit significant intensification. Now for the island of Bermuda though, there is expected impacts and this is the H worth uh, 10 meter wind field here. So we're kind of looking at the island of Bermuda, which is right here. And again, the storm is a little bit further west here on today's model runs. This is about 130 miles now to the west. And so this would avoid bringing hurricane conditions more than likely to the island. However, sustained tropical storm force winds are still very likely. And we could see 
even some 60 mile per hour, 70 mile per hour gusts in through here as well. And the HMON forecast is very similar as well, bringing again hurricane or near hurricane conditions to the island at this point. This is a little bit closer here. This is uh, just about 100 miles. Uh, so any deviation again left or right will change the impacts for Bermuda in terms of the wind. However, the rain and certainly that onshore flow is going to be uh, still ever present no matter you know how far this gets you know even if this takes another jog 60 miles west or so this will certainly still bring impacts to the island so it is something to monitor now in terms of the overall uh, threat then to atlantic canada we also notice that on the super ensemble blend this is about 139 different ensemble members including the deterministic euro gfs and uk met models uh, we notice again that this passes very near to Bermuda sometime uh, Thursday into Friday. And then this continues on that track that is generally towards the northeast before interacting with an upper low over New England. And that will likely capture this and pull it back westward. And this slingshots it uh, into Newfoundland and Atlantic Canada at this point. And there's a fair bit amount of ensemble certainty here that this is the forecast that will happen. And this is actually going to be undergoing extra tropical transition, which means it's only going to kind of sit around for several more days in this area. And so unfortunately, we're probably going to see some very significant impacts to places like Newfoundland and St. John's and Atlantic Canada over here. So it is something to kind of keep in mind. Uh, this is about the five day forecast here. And we're looking at potential impacts uh, sometime uh, within the next five days, uh, probably by the 25th ish, 24th, 25th ish of September. Uh, so here in about four to five days, we're talking about impacts to portions of Atlantic Canada. Again, this will be a full-blown hurricane as it approaches, but losing steam. But that wind field is likely to remain and only expand. And that rainfall threat, that onshore flow, and that storm surge threat is going to be a major issue up there. So something to kind of keep in mind. So if you're up there, you need to be preparing for possible hurricane impacts within about four to five days from now. Now we also have another tropical system out there this afternoon or this afternoon here. We've got Tropical Depression 8, a newly formed Tropical Depression. This was formerly uh, Invest 97L. This will likely steal the name Gaston from 98L, uh, but this will be moving off towards the north and west and likely becoming our next name system, uh, next name storm of the 2022 hurricane season as this passes and moves towards the north and east. This will eventually slow down, undergo an extra tropical transition, and move back towards the northwest here. Could get a little close here for portions of the Azor Islands. However, impacts at this time seem a little bit unlikely. However, they are on the edge of the five-day cone here. Uh, so it is something to just kind of keep in mind that potential impacts could occur, uh, but nothing significant at this time. Now, in the rest of the tropics here, we also have another system today that we are watching, this potential Caribbean system. This has now been dubbed Invest Area 98L by the Hurricane Center. Now with a 70% chance of development as this heads towards the north and west here and enters the Caribbean over the next couple of days. We take a look here at the visible satellite imagery this morning. We notice that the storm has had more deep convection uh, this morning compared to yesterday. And so this is officially not a dead tropical wave. However, if we look here at the zoomed in visible or the zoomed out visible satellite imagery, we notice that there's a couple of things hindering the storm and its organization for at least the next several days. First of all, we notice that these arc clouds moving away from the storm environment, this is actually indicative of dry air. And this is not necessarily something unusual, especially in developing tropical waves. There is dry air that will be pushed out uh, as latent heat you know, tries to build around this area. Uh, but we also noticed that Fiona's outflow, you can kind of see it pushing in uh, to the northern part of the Windward Islands at this point. Uh, we noticed that, again, Fiona's outflow is going to be creating a lot of shear uh, for the system during the next about 24 to 48 hours and beyond uh, as this moves into the Caribbean. Now, this is actually not necessarily unfavorable because this is, will actually be creating a little bit like of an upper trough. And usually upper troughs are not necessarily favorable for development. However, in this particular instance, this could actually increase convective activity and uh, lead to a lot of just complicated processes that we're not going to get into. But uh, this could actually lead to increased convective activity uh, as this approaches the Leeward Islands at this point. 
Now, if we look at the GFS evolution of this, this is the 06Z run here, Val for 2 a.m. We'll bring this out here uh, for about 2 p.m. Wednesday. We notice that again, we do have a storm here on the GFS. Now, whether this develops in 36 hours or not, I'm not necessarily sure about that. However, we do notice that again, this does try to develop and moves into the Caribbean at this time. Now the 12Z run here is a little bit weaker, still developing a storm though near South America and Trinidad and Tobago within about two days. The GFS has been certainly trending towards less development in the short term, but more development in the long term. And again, this is something that we've kind of seen, um, but I don't think we're going to have a storm within 42 hours. However, it is certainly possible and we might see advisories initiated on potential tropical cyclone nine uh, sometime tomorrow. However, on the latest run of the GFS, again, this does go into the Caribbean and does develop. And if we actually look at the upper level environment off the GFS from the 060 run, uh, we notice that the upper level environment, <clears throat> at least for several days, is going to be pretty hostile because again, we have this massive outflow uh, from Fiona. However, again, once the storm enters the Central Caribbean, especially near and south of Jamaica, that's when additional development is likely out of the system. And we noticed that a developing upper level anticyclone should help to continue promoting uh, some type of tropical genesis within this region. Within about uh, four to five days or so, we could be dealing with a storm there. We look at the European ensembles from the Zero Z run. We notice how this kind of plays out again. Something pretty weak down here in the Lesser Antilles and Trinidad, Tobago, um, you know, south of Barbados. This is not necessarily a tropical cyclone, but it could certainly be one. Uh, either way, some heavy rainfall and flooding con uh, concerns are present for Trinidad, Tobago, and Grenada. This eventually again moves into the north, into kind of the central Caribbean as it moves northwest, and then some additional development is possible. And if we look here at about hour 168, we have a range of possibilities, again, kind of from a weaker low-end solution uh, impacting portions of Central America to a stronger, more right track here impacting uh, portions of Cuba potentially. So we have a long ways to go with this. Again, not certainly um, the end of the world right now, but certainly we have seen some indications that this might be a threat for the United States. And, and more impactfully, uh, certainly a potential down there in the immediate term for portions of the Caribbean. So we have a long ways to go with this system. We'll see what it does. Uh, but regardless, a high chance of development with this system of some kind uh, as this moves into the Caribbean. All right. So that being said, I hope you have a good rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I'm Michael Romali. I'll be talking to you guys again some more later this evening.